All right, friends, welcome back to the channel. Uh, and all I can say today is, once more into the breach, dear friends, to quote Shakespeare. Um, every time I think I've got an issue kind of sorted out, somebody comes along with a really great question and makes me think about it again. And that's what happened uh, with this anti-aliasing thing that I've been testing in aisle two. Now, my experience has been that if I turn aisle two off, uh, I uh, rather, if I turn anti-aliasing off in aisle two, I see zero difference in resolution or, in, well, not in resolution, but in image clarity. There's no shimmering, there's nothing. But Oz, uh, Steve, thinks that there is an advantage to using MLSS and that if I set it at two instead of four, uh, I may well see that I get most of the benefits of having it off and an improved picture image. And I thought, well, that's interesting because I've tried it at 8, which is the maximum level for MLSS, and that's what I used to use on, my, uh, on this 3090 headset with my 8KX. But um, the 8KX doesn't have the same pixel density as, as, uh, as the crystal. And I think I do notice a difference with MLSS on versus off in terms of image quality. But let's go to settings, and I'll turn it on again. And this will involve a reboot. Now we've got MSAA set there. And I'm going to just move it up to 2. And I'm going to change nothing else. Resolution will stay the same. And let's see if uh, Oz Steve is correct and he may well be you know I mean that's where we check these things you can't really call yourself a critical thinker if you ignore avenues of investigation he said pompously and also it it's endlessly interesting to me so I mean if this turns out to be within a few frames per second of having MLSS and anti-aliasing off and I still get a really good picture or maybe even a better picture well then you know, why wouldn't I leave AA on? So let's find out. And, uh, I'm, you know, I'm okay with being wrong. It's just nice to know. Half the time you learn more when you're wrong and correct it than if you happen to get it right the very first time. Somebody told me once that Harlan Sanders, who founded Kentucky Fried Chicken, went bankrupt about five times before he finally successfully started a restaurant based on his family's chicken recipe and he was 65 when he did that so and maybe there's hope that at my age I can learn some new stuff too right now we're seeing frames per second in the standby mode here as as IL2 loads at between 56 and 70 frames per second occasionally it jumps much lower or much higher but uh, I don't think that has much to do with what we're going to see in the game. Okay, right now we're seeing 87, 85 frames per second in standby mode. So, you know, oh, I don't want to do pilot career. What am I thinking? <laughs> oh, let's go back to quick missions, and we'll do the same mission we've been doing all the way along. And, you know, it would be kind of cool if I turned out to be wrong on this, because... That would be okay. I mean, if I can get a slightly better image and equivalent frames per second, well, why wouldn't I change? Why wouldn't I change my mind? You have to be prepared to change your mind when new evidence comes along. Otherwise, you're just another <laughs> politician. I don't care what party or what beliefs you hold, but when you start getting married to an opinion instead of Changing your opinions as better evidence comes along. It's hard to accomplish anything. All right, we're not going to bother with setting up the camel. We're just going to jump right into it. And before I start the game by unpausing it, let's just see if I, you know, this is just going off my, my gut feeling, but I, I don't notice any huge improvement in the graphics. They look identical to me. Uh, I think it would, the point was made in the beta tester f uh, discord that we're, we're starting to get to the point where headset clarity 
will exceed the possibilities of existing software. Meaning that no matter how clear your headset is, the limitation will no longer be the pixel density or the, or the resolution of your headset, but rather the resolution and the potential of the software itself. Meaning we're software limited rather than firmware. I don't think we're there yet. Uh, certainly not with the 8KX, but with the crystal, the pixel density is so high. So far, so good. Okay, let's just see what we get here. And we are showing 49, 50 frames per second. As opposed to 62 to 68. With anti aliasing off. Am I seeing a noticeable increase in quality? I have to say I'm not. I'm, I'm really not. But that doesn't mean you won't on your headset. This is a very, very individual thing. And because turning anti aliasing off works pretty well on the Timex crystal, doesn't mean that it will work on, on say, the Index or my 8KX or, or any of the other plethora of headsets that are available. Um, but I don't, I don't really see. I didn't see any shimmering before, and I don't see it now. And clarity is excellent. So I'd have to say, well, Steve, I think it does give us a good image, and the frame rate is reasonable, but it's still 10 to 15 frames per second below what I get with anti alias and all. And I don't see a huge improvement in graphics and the quality or clarity. Or whether or not is I'm not seeing it. So for me, with this particular headset, the Fine Max Crystal, and this particular piece of software, I think I can turn anti aliasing and off and be fine. Now, for other games, I haven't tried it. Oh, I did try it in Microsoft Flight Simulator, and turning anti aliasing off there does not help at all. In fact, it makes it worse. I think that's because the game has been programmed to use NVIDIA's DLSS. And I get my best results in OpenXR using DLSS in Flight 620. I have not tried turning any aliases off in DCS. I just downloaded the beta version that will allow me to use OpenXR natively, completely skipping Steam. And I'm hoping to see some real improvements in, uh, in frames per second there. And if possible, I'll try and uh, I'll try and turn anti aliasing off in there and see if that helps. Uh, let's just see if I can spot this guy. I'd like a good look at an airplane just to see. see what the airplanes look like because the other airplanes look great with anti aliasing off and over it on. We're at the Model A era of the R, I think. The Model T was the first gen set of headsets. And I think we're, we're into easily second generation. It's going to be it's going to be getting better as we go along incrementally, I think, because the hardware has to keep up with the software, and then the software will have to advance to to uh, show its best in the hardware. So. It looks pretty good, but I actually think, really, I think it looks better with any aliasing off. I, uh, I can't say I'm seeing more detail. I didn't see any similar before. Anyway, that's enough for this video. Thanks for watching, and, and Oz Lee, thank you so much for uh, making the comment. And uh, inspiring me to check it. I think it's a very good suggestion. I think for some people it might it might work really well. Uh, I can't I can't talk about the arrow because I've never used an arrow. But uh, perhaps uh, having limited anti-aliasing on through MLSS at level two would be a good thing for a lot of people. I don't think it makes any difference for me, and I get 10 to 15 frames higher per second with anti-aliasing off. So. That's where I'm going to leave this argument. Uh, it's okay to disagree with me, but at this point I'm satisfied that anti-aliasing off works better in IL-2 in the Pimax Crystal. 
I don't make that argument for any other game or any other headset at this point. Thanks for watching, and Oz Steve again. Thank you so much for uh, making your comment on the channel and uh, giving me a, a good thing to check and another reason to investigate this issue further. But I think for now, we're done with it for IL-2 and the Pimax Crystal. Thanks for watching. Thanks for joining me, and I, I hope you'll come back again.